What's up you guys, FSC Truck Shop. We're gonna continue working on my 12V71 Detroit Diesel here. There's been many videos in the past, so if you want, go ahead and check back at previous videos, you'll find where this engine came from and what we're doing with it. But today, the idea is to try to get started on getting this back bell housing, back gear case assembly removed from the block so we can determine whether this block is worth anything or not because it does have a crack right in here along the side so I want to send it out to the machine shop and find out do we have a serviceable block or just a big pile of parts. I've expressed this in other videos. I by no means am a Detroit diesel expert. In fact, I'm sure there's a lot of other guys that know more about them than I do. However, I'm not seeing a lot of detailed teardowns, installations, rebuilds, whatever. And that's the goal of this here. So what I want to do now is to focus on this rear gear case slash bell housing. This came out of a Terex, some kind of like a road grader or a big oversized dump truck of sorts. So this bell housing will not work with a road tractor, which is what we're trying to put together for this. So this all has to go. Now, what a lot of people don't realize with these, and I didn't until I started getting into them, is there is a similarity between Detroit diesels of yesteryear and modern Ferraris of today. You're like, what? Yeah. Your timing that runs your cams on a modern Ferrari, not all of them, but a good amount of them that I know of, are in the front of the engine, you would think. No, they're in the back. All the gears that run the camshafts are in the back here. So to change your timing, you have to take the bell housing off. What? Yeah. Uh, give me an example. I do know V8 Ferrari, similar to what's in the Ferrari California. Your timing chains, there are two of them, are in the back. You have to take the engine out of the car to change them. Um, uh, there are other ones. I'm not going to get into the Ferraris, but you get the idea. They're very similar. Now, my Caterpillar, all the timing do is done in the front. You don't have to take the engine out to get to your timing gear. So that's with that. So enough about Ferrari versus Detroit Diesel. <laughs> but this is what the goal is. Now we did work on the front. I did take this apart trying to figure out how to get the front end of the cam off. And that's an interesting thing I can show you here as we get started. So with that, enough of me yapping. Let's just tear right into this thing and start getting it done. In the other video, I did take this cover off. I was doing it because I was thinking I was gonna shove the cam forward. Now according to the book, these cams can be changed without having to take the back of the whole truck apart. However, you do have to get this gear pushed off of the cam. This is the cam itself, the shaft, and this is the gear. And I know on the other side there's a counterweight on one of them on this side, but this is the gear. There is a plate that grabs this gear and hooks it to the cam. So the cam ought to come out reasonably easy, you would think, but we're not gonna mess with that now. I wanna get this all uncovered first. This here was taken apart back when we took the blowers off. This gear here is what runs the roots blowers that used to be here and here of which there are two at this point i think we're just going to take this cover off these vent tubes off this cover this housing it's all going to come off so either way so we're going to get ahead and get started on that now but i did want to point out this and this are the backing of the cam obviously a v8 or v6 or v12 detroit's have twin cams and we explained that in the last video because they're kind of like a giant set of legos a head that fits here could go on one engine, a 671, an inline six cylinder, or a 12 V71, which is what this is. So six and six make the 12. There you go. Obviously, if you had this, the six V71, your heads would only be three cylinders wide. Your eight cylinders would be four cylinders wide. That's the V8, I should say, and so on. And these here, there's actually a cover right here. So these go through. These are bolts with nuts on the back. So I have to support the nut over here. Anyway, to take that backing plate off, or the forward cover off. Come on. Oh, well, they're not all 9 16 are they?
That one's a three eighths. Oh, no, seven. This one back here gotta be like a half. One oddball. Oh, right. Right, right. The gear housing there, you can't have a bolt go straight through. Right. Caterpillar is something very similar to that. What am I doing? These have to be bolts because the gear, you can't go through because there's a gear in there. You can't go through the gear. Pop that off and it's just an empty cavity with the edge of this gear being right here. So this really doesn't do anything other than, well, there's nothing bolted there. Might be an air compressor here or something on a truck or on that side. Usually trucks, you see the air compressor on the back. I'm not sure how this is going to go because I don't know what kind of engine, rather, I don't know what kind of truck this is going to have. I'll try to show you guys this with better lighting now. So this gear is in here. You should be able to see the teeth right there. This here is nothing there for this category of assembly. In other words, this was in a Terex, not a road tractor. There could be an air compressor here, power steering, whatever housing that'll run off this gear. Same with over here. This looks like that used to be a tachometer. There's a, looks like for a, where a tachometer would go. And again, that was the blower drive. Sometimes you'll see an air compressor on here. But again, I don't know what kind of truck this is gonna go in, whether I'm gonna have the compressor on the front or the back. Go after this vent tube right here. See any clothes these to get me a nice set of ratchet wrenches. What am I looking at? Hmm. There's supposed to be a wire brush in there? Oh, leave a comment below, you tell me. Long bolt. Good thing, remember that. Another good thing we video. We know where, we know where crap goes. Um. Oh, it's like a filter. Okay. There's nothing in there. There's no gear case. I don't see any gear case or anything, but it is a, it's like a filter for the oil vapors to come out and it'll separate the oil from the vapor before it goes out the tube. Okay, good to know. Now this rear cam cover, five eighths on the bottom. <laughs> The rest are three quarters. I don't think we have to take that off. Use our crapola screwdriver. Nope, no need to take that off. It is like a little no, thing for a speedometer cable or tachometer cable to hook to. Excellent. There probably is no need for it, but I'm going to take these engine mount tabs off the engine. If they'll come off without too much fighting. These might be useful in the future. Top 
two or longer. Now similar to the front of the engine in the other video, there is a steel plate that goes between the bell housing and adapter gear case cover and the block. It's sandwiched between this housing here, which this housing is the input for the blowers. So those two bolts in this housing should come off. This is the oil feed for the blowers. I felt I had to stop the video and make a correction. Somehow along the way I had thought that that tube on the top of that housing that I just called the blower oil feed line actually is the return from the blower and lubrication to a bearing on a gear that you're going to see shortly. Fact is the blowers are fed from the bottom of the blowers, the top of the block, basically right around where my impact gun is. The rear blower will discharge the oil that it uses out that tube that I just wrongly called the oil feed line. The forward blower will do the same except it will send the oil forward and into the governor. That way the oil will drip back down into the block. Now when I took that apart I was wondering why there is no oil feed to that line. Well it turns out that line is an oil feed but from the blower to the bearing that you're going to see. I felt I needed to show that to you. I wanted to get the correction made so I didn't make a mistake and screw any of you guys up. You do have to bear in mind when putting this all together, there are important things to worry about. I noticed that right there, it's copper. It's not a standard washer. Look at that. Little differences there, right? I don't think this is like a banjo bolt. It's not hollow. But for whatever reason, Detroit put copper washers, not lock washers here. I'll tell you what, that's some good gasket material, I'll tell you that. Oh, and the gear comes out with it. Look at that. Oh, that's heavy. There's a bearing in there. Gear looks in good shape. Meaning, there's no teeth missing. But there's a bearing in there to, if we're going to redo it, we might want to replace this. But, man, that feels tight and smooth. So, we'll see. But that comes off. Put these away with it. I just noticed that gear, 12V71, it's labeled on that gear for whatever reason. Okay, I left these hanging tabs for a reason. This is what I was using to lift the engine up on the cherry picker. We're going to use a cherry picker to hold this housing while we take it off. I'm going to remove all the bolts in here, leaving the top bolts in place. We'll take these off, then I'll hook the cherry picker, then I'll take the remainder off. There are... Looks like six larger bolts here and six more 9 16th bolts. I do believe these 9 16th bolts have to come off in order to, well, maybe not. They're recessed. I don't really know. Let's see. Let's try without it. Those 9 16th bolts might hold that steel plate on. So this one is, what size is this? 15 6 no. Not 15, 16, it's the other one. These middle six bolts are three quarters. Spin one of those 916s out just to see what happens. 
very short. I did see a hidden bolt right here. Goes through the steel plate into the bell. And there's probably one on this side too. Sure is. Gotta watch them hidden ones. That oil pan proved that, didn't it? There's one hidden bolt on this side. I realized afterwards that these bolts that hold this little cover on go through this steel plate and into that iron housing. So they have to be taken off as well. These are half inch rather than the other ones that are 9 sixteenths. They got to come out. Including that one buried deep down in there. Obviously I have the cherry picker all set up holding the weight from the engine lift points. In that steel plate are captured nuts. Pretty confident I got them all. I'll just have to convince it to separate. Just be on the safe side, I'm gonna take these inner ones out. They look like they go into the block. There's a recess in there, they kind of look like these don't hold this bell housing but they might worst case the steel plate hits the ground a lot of RTV sealant on these too don't seem to change nothing does it because that came out Looks like it's separating a little. Dripping oil on me now though. Oh yeah. Stop the press. It ain't going yet. <laughs> when I whacked it with a hammer and this thing fell out, that's what uncovered that little bolt. You son of a gun. I did look, I didn't see one. Surprise! I want to fall off now. You know what, I ain't stick my finger in there.
There we are. Hidden bolt. You do have to take those sacks out to get this off, apparently. There you go, boys and girls. That's the gear case. Cam 1, Cam 2, or Cam 1, Cam 2, I don't know. 12V71 written right here. And I do know there is a difference between a right-hand rotation and a left-hand rotation. To be honest, I forget which one this is. But you don't know which one you're going to use. This could be a marine engine. You do have one spin in one way and the other spin in the other. So I'm imagining this gear could be flipped and put here on this boss. There you go. Wow. Quite interesting.